Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, today is Friday, July 23rd, 2021. I want everyone to think for themselves. What I'm going to say is going against conventional thought right now. Alexander Usyk, who's about to fight Anthony Joshua for the heavyweight championship, right? Multiple belts. Is currently going off at a plus 205. The casino is telling you, this is the prevailing market price right now. The casino is telling you that if these guys fought three times, Usyk would win at most one of the three times. They're giving Usyk less than a 33% chance of winning the fight. Folks, that's lunacy. Right? Understand, um, if I asked you to close your eyes and to tell me who you would give these odds to, to beat an unbeaten former undisputed champion, let's say a Terrence Crawford or a current unbeaten undisputed champion, a Josh Taylor, if you told me to name the fighter where you feel that Crawford and Taylor would have less than a 33% chance of winning the fight, folks, you would be thinking hard about historical names, right? I'm not even sure if I would take Sugar Ray Robinson at those odds. Right, a fighter who is going to reduce an unbeaten, crafty southpaw like Usyk to less than 33% odds would have to be a great fighter, spectacular fighter, who you felt had something to defeat Usyk's ambidexterity, his southpaw stance his craftiness as a boxer. Now, that fighter, quite frankly, is not Anthony Joshua. Maybe Joshua will win this fight. I'm encouraging people to hedge the play. The hedge should be Joshua by stoppage. If you believe Usyk is too small as a heavyweight, if you're prepared to overlook heavyweight history, the fact that Usyk is bigger than Mike Tyson. The fact that Usyk's bigger than Roy Jones. The fact that Tyson and Jones were heavyweight champs not that long ago. The fact that Usyk is bigger than Sonny Liston. Joe Fraser, Rocky Marciano. If you're going to overlook that, Ezra Charles, and if you're of the mindset that the world's changed, right? Now you have all these big guys, right? As if a big guy like a Deontay Wilder would have a chance against prime Mike Tyson. Let's be real here, right? If you believe that size matters so much, where whatever Usyk is doing, he's too small against Anthony Joshua. Right, Joshua's going to come across the ring, find him, stop him for the first time in Usyk's professional career. Well, then you'll be covered with the hedge. Joshua by stoppage. Do the research. You're going to find out that you're getting much better odds on a Joshua by stoppage play than you would Joshua simply to win. Not only that, folks, you're getting incredible odds. Leverage to work with. 
on the Usyk side of the play. Understand, if I bet $100 on Usyk, the casino is going to give me $205 back with the $100 I bet. Understand, too, Joshua has had problems in the ring. I want you to look at the Joshua record. How many fights ago was it that he got knocked down multiple times by Andy Ruiz? Folks, Ruiz just fought Chris Ariola. Did you know that Chris Ariola did better against Andy Ruiz than Anthony Joshua did? I would argue that Joshua's hallmark fight was his victory over Vladimir Klitschko. As I've said here many times, and trust no one, don't trust me, right? Trust no one. As I've said many times, please look up the last time that Vladimir Klitschko had fought before he fought Anthony Joshua. Right? Understand when Joshua fights Klitschko in a fight where Joshua's on the canvas, Joshua gets up and looks dead on his feet. One of the big questions in any career retrospective on Vladimir Klitschko is why didn't he finish Joshua? Let me make another point too. Vladimir Klitschko had his brother with him in the corner. Former heavyweight champion Vitaly Klitschko. Vitaly Klitschko was telling his brother, this guy's finished. The thought in the Klitschko camp was that Joshua was too muscle-bound. That Joshua was going to hit a wall. He was going to have stamina problems. Well, just understand, that's supposed to be Joshua's big fight. Are you sure you're going to put him in the class of, let's say, a Larry Holmes or a Joe Lewis at this stage of his career? Maybe Joshua goes on to an illustrious career, right? Maybe he does. I know many of you like to talk about his victory over Kubrat Pulev, right? I did think Kubrat Pulev was going to win that fight, right? Kubrat Pulev, let's just say, is getting blown out in the third round. I applaud Joshua, but then finds his way back in the fight. Do you think Joshua could fight that way against Alexander Usyk? Let me also say, too, I know some people are going to say, look, Derek Chisora gave Usyk problems. Folks, do you really believe that Anthony Joshua is going to storm across the ring like Derek Chisora did against Usyk? Understand, Chisora is a guy who stormed across the ring and dropped Joseph Parker in the first round of his match against Joseph Parker. Chisora, let's be charitable here, is very aggressive by heavyweight standards early in fights. By the way, that Joseph Parker, that's the same Joseph Parker who goes the distance against Joshua in Joshua's backyard. Right? So don't get me wrong. I think Joshua is a major talent. I do, right? What I want people to understand is that Usyk is a major talent. Usyk, like Joshua, has an Olympic gold medal, and he did not win it in his backyard. Understand, Usyk fought a hyper-aggressive Barat Gassiev and beat him by several rounds. I encourage people to Google Gassiev's comments after that fight. Right? Joe Joyce right now is making noise in the UK as an up-and-coming heavyweight. Joe Joyce, by the way, silver medalist in the Olympics. 
Joe Joyce also has already lost to Usyk in a semi-professional boxing match. Right, Chaz Witherspoon, Derek Chisora are not the only heavies who Usyk has dealt with. So, let's play this out. You've gotten the plus 205, which you know is going to drop before this fight goes off, because in your heart you know that if these guys fought three times, Anthony Joshua is not going to always win two of the three. You know this fight's a lot closer, just like you know. There's nobody out there you would put Terrence Crawford in against within range of his weight class where he'd be going off at a plus 205. Same thing with Josh Taylor. Let's remember, too, how Usyk becomes undisputed at Cruiser. He doesn't go in the back door, folks. He beats Maris Breedis, who was unbeaten at the time, in Breedis' backyard. Right, so look, just as an odds play, break down the bet here, just as an odds play, the minute they tell you Usyk, and it's above a plus 150, in other words, they're giving Usyk less than a 40% chance, then you hear it's actually a plus 205. Right, so they're giving him less than a 33% chance. And you privately know, whatever the judges' scorecards were, that Joshua was in a pitched battle, not just against Vladimir Klitschko, not just against Andy Ruiz, but you privately know that Joshua was in a pitched battle against Alexander Povetkin. You understand that speed and movement throw Joshua, right? You know that Usyk is quicker handed than Joshua. Close your eyes for a second and just answer a simple question. Who has the better boxing skills? You know it's Usyk, right folks? Usyk's a southpaw as well. Right, so Joshua is a young man. This is the heavyweight division. You're in your early 30s. You're a young man at heavyweight. Joshua is a young man who's just figuring out how to deal with slick fighters like an Usyk. Right, and Usyk's a slick southpaw again. Slick fighters who move. Right? Take a look at the last couple of rounds of Usyk's victory over Tony Bellew in the UK. Right? Understand, Usyk is one of these guys who travels for fights. Not everyone is able to be Floyd Mayweather in Las Vegas, right? Floyd hardly ever left Las Vegas for most of his, well, the last two-thirds of his career. Not everyone is Anthony Joshua in the UK. Right? Most fighters, even elite fighters, gold medal winners, have to travel for big fights. Usyk traveled to the UK. What I want you to do the last two rounds of the Tony Bellew fight. And Bellew starts that fight, it looks like he's winning rounds. But you understand that Usyk's one of these guys who starts a little slower as he processes information. Right? Look at Usyk's footwork. Then ask yourself a basic question. Right? In that fight, Usyk bounces. Comes over on the side on Tony Bellew is able to throw a left hand, and he's left-handed right down Main Street. Right, look at how hurt 
Bellew is on the canvas. Bellew who fought David Haig twice at heavy. Right, folks, the better boxer, the better footwork belongs to Usyk. There's only one unbeaten fighter in this fight. It's Usyk. Joshua's calling card is his power. He is a great puncher. Right? I believe he's even a better puncher than Deontay Wilder because Wilder is a great punch. That's straight right. Joshua is a great puncher. He can hit you with rights or lefts. But Joshua is not going to be able to find Usyk early in the fight. Right? Joshua's cautious at the beginning of the fight. This isn't going to be a Charles Martin fight where Usyk's standing there saying, please hit me with the right hand. No, 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 that's not this fight. Right? Usyk's going to be moving early in the fight. Folks, style-wise, he's already fought a tougher matchup. Derek Chisora. What I want people to do is to think about what happens if by the time Joshua starts moving, the fight's even. I know Usyk normally is a slow starter. I know, in my opinion, fighters like Canelo, Pacquiao, Joshua. Joshua is one of the biggest box office draws in the entire sport. He is the biggest at heavyweight. In my opinion, these guys all start with a two-round lead. Let's say the fight starts and Joshua knows he has to be deliberate. He can't be frivolous. He can't waste his stamina. Right? Let's say he realizes something most of the public doesn't. When Usyk has you hurt, now don't get me wrong, Usyk will gladly take a decision. Right? As he did against Gassiev, as he did against Bredis. But if Usyk has you hurt, he's actually a finisher. Again, just look at the Tony Bellew tape. Joshua might realize, I need to pace myself. By the time we get to the seventh round, right? Usyk might have the fight tied at three rounds apiece. Who do you feel more comfortable in handling the last six rounds of this fight? Anthony Joshua, who's exhausted, who's looking at his corner like, you know, a kid going on the school bus for the first time at the end of the Andy Ruiz first fight? Right, Joshua, who looks exhausted, exhausted, not just dazed, exhausted when he gets off the canvas against Vladimir Klitschko, or Usyk, who went the distance with Gassiev, who, by the way, is going to be a terror at heavyweight. Right, Usyk, who in a nip and tuck fight, showed better stamina than Derek Chisora the second half of the fight. Usyk, who in a nip and tuck fight in Breedis' backyard, wins that fight by decision. Folks, Usyk in big fights has extensive experience dealing with the second half of fights. Folks, if Joshua doesn't come out and do what he did to Kubrat Pulev, right, knock Usyk down, have Usyk dazed and confused, have a huge lead on the scorecards because of the knockdown, right, have his opponent softened up, stuff that has never happened to Usyk in his career. Unless Joshua does that, this is an incredibly difficult fight. 
understand Josh was going around telling people, telling members of the press, that he feels Usyk is a tougher matchup for him than Tyson Fury. Right now, I don't buy that, but let me just say this. If Usyk is that dangerous, how are betters on Usyk getting a plus 205? Right, simply put, this is the fight Usyk wanted. He has it. His style meshes well with Joshua. He's more mobile than Joshua. He's the better fighter than Joshua. Joshua has looked a bit wooden in some recent fights. Joshua's cautious. Right? Good luck for Joshua dropping Usyk. Right? Let's not get too carried away. Looking at the Kubrat Pulev fight, folks, Usyk's much better than Pulev. Right, so, the way I'm playing it, you do what you want, do your own independent research, look at the videos you feel are right. Right, to me, all I have to do is look at Usyk against Tony Bellew, is look at Usyk against Murat Gassiev, look at Usyk against, oh, forgot his name here, mid-video, the silver medal winner, uh, Joe Joyce, right? Folks, I don't mind that Joshua is the favorite, but this fight's really a 55-45 fight. The fact that the odds makers have made it a 70-30 fight, right, roughly, means that you have value here. You can take Usyk to win the fight and hedge the play with Joshua by KO because isn't the Joshua argument that he's fighting a guy who's too small for the heavyweight division? Isn't the Joshua argument that Joshua hits too hard that somehow over the 12 rounds Joshua's going to catch him? If that's the argument, hedge the play with Joshua by stoppage. So that's the way I'm playing it. I already have Usyk at plus 205. I'm just waiting for odds to post as we get closer to the fight for Joshua by KO because I know they're going to be shorter than Joshua simply to win. But understand the risk involved. If Joshua goes the distance and somehow finds a way to outbox Alexander Usyk, you lose it all. That's the risk I'm willing to take. That's how I see it. I like Usyk plus 205. I believe like the Manny Pacquiao line. And Pacquiao, think about how ridiculous that line was. A plus 350. <laughs> well, here it's a plus 205. Like the Manny Pacquiao line, I expect this plus 205 to drop down into the 180s, right? Take advantage of the value being offered here. Take the plus 205. If the casino knew what it was doing, Usyk would be going off below a plus 150, right? With the expected winnings that are made possible by taking the plus 205, you can hedge the play with Joshua by stoppage. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me also encourage the Joshua crowd, because every Joshua video I do, the first few comments say, Dwyer's a hater. Dwyer was something against Anthony Joshua. Yada, yada, yada. Now look, I admire Joshua. I know that sounds odd to people. Little kids look up to the heavyweight champion. You know what I believe. There are two groups in boxing at all times. There's the heavyweight champion. Then there's everyone else. Right? I believe Joshua, because of his status as heavyweight champion, overshadows even the Canelos and Terrence Crawfords of the world. Right, Great fighters. And I love Joshua's unity message. I also have to say, you know, Joshua's a guy who 
isn't relying on judges most fights, right? Kubrat Pulev did not go the distance, right? Dominic Brazil did not go the distance, right? You know, Vladimir Klitschko did not go the distance. We'll overlook the fact that Klitschko is very much in that fight, very late in that fight, right? But Joshua's stopping guys. I respect that. But look, this is a gambling site. This isn't a PR site. Right? I'm simply here looking at fighters, and the bottom line is Joshua is not Lennox Lewis at this stage of his career. He's not Ali at this stage of his career. Hell, he's not Joe Frazier at this stage of his career. He's not Joe Lewis at this stage of his career. If the casino is going to price the fight as if he's prime Joe Lewis, I'll be the casino's Huckleberry. I like the underdog. You're going to give me a plus 205? Sounds good to me. I'll hedge the play with Joshua by stoppage. So if Joshua becomes the first man to stop Usyk, I'll say, oh, wow, okay, Joshua did better than I thought. But I'll look at my bank account and it won't show a loss. But if this fight makes it to the second half of the fight, and you're thinking, wow, who's winning this fight? The scorecards will be close. Then Joshua's going to be in severe trouble. Also, don't sleep on the idea that as Usyk is fighting Joshua, he starts to realize, hey, I'm not dealing with an aggressive heavyweight like Derek Chisora in the first half of Chisora fights. Right? I can set this guy up. Also, if I move, this guy can't hit me with his jab. Understand, Joshua would have a hard time as it is because Usyk's left-handed. What's Joshua going to do? Is he going to start leading with hooks and getting reckless? No. That's not who he is. He's going to be cautious. He's going to fight the same fight he fought against Alexander Povetkin. What I want people to do for that fight, and Joshua certainly wins that fight by stoppage, is Google Povetkin's comments after that fight. Povetkin firmly believed he was winning the fight. What I want people to do is to look at the first four rounds of that fight and tell me who you had winning. I like the underdog. I'll take the plus 205. Casino, thank you very much. Later on, I'll hedge the play with Joshua by stoppage. I do expect the plus 205 to drop considerably. Right now, today is Friday, July the 23rd, 2021. Let's see what happens with the point spread. Thanks for stopping by.